Welcome back to the adventures of Au Contraire the Fourth, the monster, the psychopath, the murderer of the Holy Roman Empire. Last episode, some very peculiar thing happened, whereby I thought we'd conquested all of the second tier necessary to reform Rome. Tier 2, Balkans and Sicily. Of course, silly fucking me didn't realise that apparently this random province over here next to Antioch counts as either the Balkans or Sicily. So there we go, that's why we haven't got that one, because we are still missing a province there. Essentially, right now, we're just waiting to go to war with the Seljuks, so our next character, whenever he, we, we end up playing as Au Contraire the, the Fifth. Wow, Au Contraire the Fifth. He is going to be the, uh, he's going to be the golden child to actually unite all of these other provinces, because I believe that's all we can do in terms of Rome at this stage. So right now, we need to get Byzantium, which is clearly under the Seljuks. They've got all of uh, Anatolia there. The Balkans and Sicily, which apparently includes part of Antioch. And then, finally, we've got uh, Italia 11 and Northeast Africa, which, funnily enough, is under the Seljuks as well. So, to reform Rome, there's one war ahead of us, and that war will be led by our glorious son, Au Contraire, the, the fourth, the fifth, Au Contraire, the fifth. So, it's up to us right now to ensure that we've got as many bloodlines as set up as possible, the child is as groomed and as powerful as possible, and ready to take over the realm, and more importantly, we're in a situation whereby the realm is ready for such a major war. Things like destabilizing the Seljuks would help out a little as well. Pro uh, you know, so in descent, uh, sabotaging provinces if we really want to get that meta with it. Empowering other neighbor states. Forming alliances, maybe if we wanted to go that far with things. But, you know, um, that's, that's quite a long distance. But hey, with that, our goal is then complete. So we've got to make it count for what it is. Um, we've almost conquered the entirety of Africa as well. The Canary Islands apparently are uninhabitable this time around. Interesting. More importantly, our vassals have taken everything but three provinces in Africa. Uh, and then, of course, there's obviously the Seljuk domain there. We are going to try and take as much as possible. If we can take all of Africa from the Seljuk, so that includes all down to the Horn here, and uh, round past the Nile Delta, then obviously you want to take the Levant as well. We might as well take that just because it ties up the borders quite nicely. Move up and maybe cut them off around here. And that'd be a good plan. Sort of cut them off around the Syrian desert. I think I think that's the idea. Anyway, it's a long way away before we've got anything like that on the list of things to do. Getting a shit ton of piety, because as you all know, we are a very pious individual. Um, man, that's pretty crazy. So all of the factions, Court Faction, Glory Faction, Prosperity Faction, Tradition Faction, all like us a lot. Which is kind of surprising, because generally in the game you have to make a concerted effort to, Im I mean it says there, improve. I d I d I've not pointed out this entire campaign, so I might as well mention it now. You can improve or worsen the mood by doing things that they obviously don't approve with. So the court faction likes good relations with the members, granting a landed title to the members. These are just people inside your court, um, or, or members of court, I should say. Glory faction are people who enjoy warfares, tournaments, sort of classic medieval rough and tumble. Prosperity, it's obviously, you know, as it says there, some affairs. Merchant republics, um, winning wars in the pursuit of trade, apparently. Leech having high wealth, they like quite a lot. And then tradition faction is sticking to... Um, you know, tradition, so keeping the church empowered, not changing laws, keeping, I believe it's keeping women down? I don't know, but that would, that would make sense though. Anyway, we've got a lot to do in regards to Lucifer's Zone as well. Now, I did want to try and, if possible, set us up to be a demon head of our own religion in the form of Politian. One of you said that apparently what we can do, and I actually didn't know this was a mechanic, as long as our, our son has... Um, or as long as our wife is the educator of our heir, so we could get rid of, uh, we could get rid of one of our children here. Um, oh, interesting. Um, we could get rid of, I actually didn't know that faith was different to heritage and how you assimilate things. So what we can say is get rid of, um, let's get rid of her then. Uh, let's just give her any old guardian. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit confused with exactly how we do this. Then we give her control of our heir. So that is going to be au contraire the fourth. We give her control of that. Now, apparently, after we've done that, we can right-click on Okantra and ask for, um, ask for faith or heritage. Ah, there we go. Yeah, you're right. I actually kind of forgot we could do that. So, if we go for heritage, he will try and take her religion and culture, or we go with faith, at which point he would just take her, her faith. I'm not actually sure which is better in terms of an education, though, beyond the sort of, um, I mean, faith gives idolizer, which is better than heritage, which gives nothing, I guess? That can become Erudite or Zealous, both of which are very good. So, I guess we'll go for Faith then. So, right-click, change childhood focus to Faith. Fingers crossed then, he will now take on our wife's religion. What that means is that our son will then be Paulician, and then we can go across that big route, and then hopefully make our own Faith. Is essentially the, the next goal in line. We actually may be able to do that before we, or it might come before we conquer Rome. Making ourselves the head of a Catholic subdivision, I think, would be very, very awesome. 
And of course, in the background, we've got our scholarship and hermetic stuff to be doing as well. Oh, you know what? We're not hermetic. We're just scholarship, aren't we, this time around? So we've got Magnum Opus to write, but no, that was, that was completely a different character. That was our last guy. So we are trying to get the scholarship folks. I was doing that just so we got cynical so that our wife might want to approach us. But either way, the 100 military tech points I'll take. We've got a couple of rebellions to deal with here very, very briefly. Um, where is this dude? Oh my god, he's got 700 men left. Why don't we just raise the troops from nearby and just have them crush him quickly? I think 10,000 men, probably more than sufficient. Now, what was the other one as well? That one looks like it's in Spain. Oh no, it's Romuva. Right, okay, so what we're going to do then for this one, just bring some boats in. I know you guys love it when I try and manage fleets because I hate doing it personally and I'm terrible at it and really don't think it's a good system, but hey, we're going to move some fleets over. Now, we should be able to sail up right through like Kiev or something like that or move around into this area without having to go all the way around. May just be Vikings, though. Now, another thing to mention, I did buy the new music pack, which I massively regret because they don't fit into the game at all. They're much louder than all the other music pieces and are really, really distracting when I try and do commentary, so I'm going to turn those off in the future. I guess if I play casually, I might enable it because generally the music is very good for CK2, which is why I bought it in the first place, but... I don't know. This this one this one just doesn't sound particularly great, I will admit. Oh, God, we've got to travel all the way around. I mean, it's probably just quicker to run, isn't it, in that case? Just cut straight through the middle. Don't worry about that. There we go. Your son, O Contrat, through the teachings of Imperatrice Praxidia, has been studying the principles of... It's just Praxida, isn't it? The Paulician faith. Okay. He also got Idolizer, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, I must persist the truth is out there. That's going to make us a heliocentric scholar and make the church hate us as well, so why not embrace it? Now, what I would like to do is actually move us back to being the guardian of him now. The only issue is with the faith, folks. I don't know if he'll adopt our faith again after that. Weird. I do want to be his, his educator because we might be able to turn some of these into much better traits. We might be able to influence that becoming, you know, zealous or something along those lines. Many years of my life has been sent dedicated to Lucifer's own, performing missions and tasks in the interests of the Order and its High Priest. Today, all the effort has been rewarded. I have become the new High Priest. Leadership and guidance I shall provide. I was trying to do this mission to equip this priest. Peace. Priest Bishop. Wow, that's hard to say. This Priest Bishop, which I didn't think was worth living in because it's like the most pointless event possible. Uh, there we go. That, that was all the event chain was. You right click on a dude, you say Corrupt Priest. And that's basically the end of it. Alright, let's quickly siege these things down here. Do you guys want to... How is that other... How is that other one not ended? Excuse me. <sighs> I, I hate these revolts. They're driving me insane. Thank you. Get out. Good God. They're so annoying, man. These these wars tend to go for These uh, rebellions with Shattered Retreat. It's just horrible. I can't find a way to shun, turn off Shattered Retreat either. I think we had this issue in Discord whereby it, it's potentially something you can't disable in HIP. We weren't entirely sure of, of what was causing it. I tried the sort of classic save game edit, putting the line Shattered Retreat equals false or whatever. Um, it actually hasn't worked whatsoever. So... Not sure about that one. I know there is a lure file, I believe you can edit as well, but I'm not. That, that, you know, I need my achievements because I'm clearly playing in Iron Man mode. How are you not... Oh my god, this... Shattered, Shattered Retreat, I honestly think, is one of the worst additions into CK2. And I, I, I mean that sincerely. I think it just does not fit the game at all. This is with Decisive Battles as well. So it... Oh god. Um, who, actually, who cares about pissing off the Pope? He's our, he's our immortal demon servant, isn't he? Um... Pope should stay out of my business. Yeah, fuck off. We're getting the trade brave out of that. I think we already had it anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But, uh, wait, did we? Uh, I think we would, seeing as we haven't had a pop-up saying that we're getting the trade brave. Right, where are they now, then? Um, is this what's left of them? Romover Uprising, that could be them. Okay, let's chase them this way a little bit. My god, this is such a pain. Yeah, I, I really hate Shattered Retreat. I think it's just an awful addition. Doesn't really make any sense that, look, we've got this rebellion. Now we're having to divert all our forces to run across the bloody Baltics to try and chase them down. For some time now, the country of the county of Constantinople has served as an unofficial training ground for your armies. There is plenty of open space on which to train and abundant food to feed the troops. This is massive. So this is one of the bigger prosperity events and it actually gives us a permanent 15% levy size in Constantinople in exchange for 3,600 gold. Unless you haven't noticed, we've got 22,000. That's a really, really, really big get for the campaign. That's huge. Now, I'd, we haven't seen any of those other prosperity events, probably down to the fact that we haven't been this rich ever before, but more down to the fact that... Uh, more down to the fact that, obviously, we keep moving capital quite frequently as well. So, that's definitely not really helped out with the contributions there. What is... What have we got raised? We've got these boats raised that apparently we can't stand down. Is that good? Nope. There we go. Okay, that's better. Some must have just had troops in. So, those were the retinues that we marched all the way up. So, let's bring those back to come and defend Constantinople once again. How have we not got enough garrison to repel these guys? What? Oh, because the garrison just haven't replenished yet. Imperial Decay minus 50%. Okay, you know what? That's a little bit annoying. Can we, can we adjust that? That's all we can. 
We're down to minus... Well, we're down to minus two there with, with 48. Or down to 48 with minus two there. We could order the tournament as well. Again, we can afford it, so we should always be doing that. We can set up some duchies. Did I not give that to you in the first place? Yeah, no, we don't really care about that one. Um, we can take Hungary. Okay. Sure. Thank you. It's now Moldova. <laughs> Why the fuck not, huh? Um, I assume this dude has been putting in the work. Yeah. Oh, it's Lombardy again. I don't want to make Lombardy that powerful. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. So this dude can have it instead. Um, Grant landed title. You can have the Kingdom of Hungary. There we go. Nice. Okay. Um, then we can also serve that one and that one, which I'm not really too interested in. We'll let the vassals do that if they want it. We've got 18 titles to make. Holy shit. Um, probably, again, it's a lot of this land that we've just picked up from random bits and bobs. Now, we could, with the Pope in our pocket still... Approach some of these random Catholic enclaves in a couple of ways. We could basically ask for a claim on this one and then obviously just push it. Um, which would help out a little bit. It wouldn't be insignificant. These guys might just straight up offer or accept vassalization. No. Base reluctance minus three. He doesn't really like us too much. We won't be able to convince him. He's Russian? I assume that's Russian. Um, there's not really much else we can do there. Well, let's try sending him a gift to start off with here. 66 opinion. Maybe send him an artifact as well. We've got something crappy we can throw at him, surely. Um... Uh, yeah, here you go. Have a have an ancient rusty weapon. There you go, my dude. I'll bestow it upon you, my soon-to-be new vassal. Whenever you're ready. Oh, the game's very slow these days. I think the new patches made it not particularly stable. Nope, it's still a minus three because not much jolly in foreign culture. Um, I mean, kind of sucks, but we could just force vassalize him if he's, if he's going to force our hand like that. I would like to grab just as many of these little splinter states as possible, to be honest with you, just to stop the Seljuks moving back in on them. Wow, okay, so we've got some pretty significant tech advances again. I kind of want to go for military organization, because that's going to take us up to... It's going to give us another... Well, it's going to take us from 300% revenue to 50% revenue, but that's not a 50% increase, because well, it's it's based on the, the current value, right, rather than the base value. Oh, I actually don't know. I actually don't know how that... Might be another 50%. Anyway, we'll grab that nonetheless, um, and that will give us... Oh, you know what? That was a lot of troops. Obviously, it wasn't 50% because we've gone from 60,000 to... Yeah, we've gone from 60,000 to 70,000, which, funnily enough, 10% 10, 10 is not 50% of that amount. Look, it, look, you know what I'm getting at. You know what I'm trying to say, but I don't know the actual mathematic word to uh, describe what I'm talking about. Let's get ourselves a bunch more knights because we can definitely afford it. And honestly, I just love the idea of this massive knight retinue. Like, nothing else. Well, obviously, we've, we've kind of mixed it in the past there to help out with sieging. But I just love the idea of having this gigantic stack of knights. What do you think? Noble Customs level 8? I mean, I assume we can build all the buildings in Constantinople with that, right? Um, Noble Customs level 8. So we need town infrastructure and trade practices, both level 6. Um, does anything require Noble Customs level 7? Noble Customs level 8 is required for the keep level 6 and keeps our very, very good 10% extra levy sides on top. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Plus, it makes all of our feudal vassals have another plus 2 opinion with us, which isn't too much, but, you know does help out a little bit there. We can still go for another level of legalism or tolerance if you want as well. This is the most tech I think I've ever got to in a game of CK2. We are playing fairly late though. 1320 is probably also the latest we've ever played in CK2. But that's um that's awesome. How long has this been game been going on for? 240 years is quite a long campaign though, huh? It doesn't feel like it's been 240 years at all. Right, let's get these retinues back. Where have our new retinues spawned in? I imagine Paris or something like that, right? It's just wherever we have a free holding. Apparently right the way down there in uh, in Jerusalem or near Jerusalem. Just bring them up and nearby, but we're obviously not going to move them in so they don't get smashed. So yeah, just basically stopping the Seljuks, weakening the Seljuks is going to be what this character dedicates the rest of his life to now. Um, kidnap him. I mean, kidnapping him and keeping the Seljuk Emperor in our prison. And forcing the whole ram into a regency, which in turn allows, what, like weak claims to be pressed against him, I believe. This seems like a good idea. We could also... Maybe even bribe a couple of people as well, seeing that these guys are really up for it. 500 gold for 5%. Normally, that'd be a horrible deal. But in this case, I think it's very, very valuable. When you've got this much gold and this is such a high target prisoner. Literally the only guy standing between us and Rome version 2.0. Let's move our Spy Master over there as well. Don't think we really need any more tech points. And I don't think we're at any risk of being murdered at all. There might be other plots, you know, against other people that might be relevant. Something against our wife or our son. But against us, not going to happen. We've got to be the most beloved ruler, right? Even with this dude... Which I think is kind of surprising that we spent our whole life in the in the in the Satanist society, Lucifer Zone. We've got you know drunkard, we've got cynical, we've got cruel, we've got greedy, lustful, envious. Even with all of this, our lowest vassal opinion for being just the biggest asshole cunt emperor alive, thirty-five opinion. That's the lowest one, and that's because it was a guy that we defeated in war. Wow. I don't know how we've managed it. I mean, I've I've no idea how this has happened. But it is, uh, I think it's it's fairly impressive nonetheless. Right, where are those retinues? Hey, hurry up. I would, I kind of like these raiders not to burn down Constantinople. 
So along with our minus one decay there from the tournament, we've also got plus one learning and 100 military tech points. Again, 100 military tech points at this stage of the game. Not really too relevant, I will admit. Um, what would we even want next with our military tech points, realistically? Cavalry? I mean, I guess so. I guess we go all in cavalry now, right? Unless we really wanted to go for that extra 50% base, base retinue value size. It also removes the pagan homeland attrition penalty. Not that's going to be relevant. Um, I don't really know where we go for. Maybe siege equipment. I think siege equipment would be quite good. Because that's a much more measurable increase, isn't it? Um, it goes from 87.5. Yeah, it's a plus 15% to our siege speed. That's quite a lot. Like, that's much more significant, I would say, than cavalry being very slightly stronger. What, 3%, 2% stronger there? Definitely not worth it. Right, let's move them over. Um, you know what? Our vassals might have actually saved us there. Thank you, vassals. A son named Maurice. He's terrible. Maurice Carling. Um, and what have we got? Pepin. Pepin's a good one because Pepin is obviously that very famous historical Carlin name, generally associated with idiots. And, well, no, wait. Pepin, Carl, Carlin's father was called Pepin, wasn't he? Okay, ignore that. Charles, Louis, what have we got? Nui is pretty good. Carloman. Uh, toot. We've already got a toot this generation. La Baguette. None. We've already got a toot. We've already got an au contraire. Okay, let's try another one. Surely we've, I've, surely we've had way more male names in this that have stuck around in the family tree. Stropier was in there. Should have gone with that one. We've got two Charles. Of course, Cigarette Carling. One of the rarer Carling names that we have not seen very much. Oh, God. The, nightmarish, the nightmare is not over yet for my wife. Her recovery was only passing. Her conditions are quickly worsened after giving birth to a child. If she does not get better soon, she will surely perish. May God help her. She has a troubled pregnancy. She has the flu as well. She may be done for. Not only that, she also has a severe illness and ill treatment. She is seriously done for. I think this is going to be the end of her. Goodbye. She's fine. She's actually alive. What the fuck? My wife, Praxida, went through an extremely painful and dangerous labor. And while she managed to survive, she has been left weakened and fragile after the ordeal. Is the womb still in working condition? You're a charmer as always. You're a charmer as always, au contraire the fourth. This is why you're the leader of Lucifer's own. Nice, there we go. They are pleased with our diligence, and we've lost yet another decay. We're down to 46 now. This is looking pretty nice. So a lot of you are probably wondering, why am I not curing the dude with cancer? Well, honestly, we kind of want to die, don't we? <laughs> as long as our heir comes out well, if he comes out Paulician, if he comes out a, a well-educated child, I mean, he's 10 years old. He's got 11, 11, 11, 13, 13 in stats. It's obviously very good. We can also absorb the life force from our children. But honestly, oh man, I didn't get him baptized. Shit. Whoops. Um, honestly, at the rate we're going, we've only got to wait another eight years. Then hopefully by that time, we'll die. At which point, this kid can take over, and then we can immediately go to war with the Seljuks. We can just come out swinging, you know? As this guy's first... Imagine this. 18 years old. Like, our... What was it? Was it this character? Was insanely good? You know, uh, at the age of 18, did a whole bunch of glorious stuff. Imagine that, though. 18 years old. Father dies. You take over. First thing you do? Ah, oh, just restore Rome. I think that would be pretty happen impressive so that's what we're going to go for with this one that's why i'm not curing him in the hopes that he'll die maybe a little bit earlier it, i mean it's only a minus three health oh I'm saying that is quite hefty though isn't it i can't imagine he's gonna live past 40 let's put it that way i think Roy castillo the second is a real traitor i agree I, I bet he is the traitor so you might have also noticed we're mobilizing the armies here we're gonna head over to antioch itself nice okay so we can get the scholar uh become called the heretic gain scholar um ugh, it's only 300 prestige and to have Every priest and zealous character in our realm have minus 25 opinion of us. Not worth it. Really not worth it. So I think instead we'll just take the scholar and uh, continue studying in secret. Because it's no prestige at this point in the game. Really not worth it, huh? Can hear someone sneaking inside when I thought it was a burglar. It's in fact Prince Toot. Could use some practice reading. Classic Toot. I'm actually a little bit apprehensive about Prince O'Contra coming out well now. Um... I almost want to join the Benedictine Order. Just for the ability to educate him. Oh my god. Just for the ability to educate him with with diligence. But that is a long way to go, isn't it? Now, you know what? We've played many, many characters in the Benedictine and the uh, and the other... Well, it's just the Benedictine Order, isn't it? We've, we've not actually gone with the uh, Dominican Order at all. We've, we've spent a long time in the Benedictine Order. Let's just stick to our guns this time around. Let's play an evil character for once. As, like I said... The perfect sort of lead up to the church being overthrown by the Carlin dynasty. The dynasty they've shunned and shamed many, many times despite no matter how saintly the dynasty was. It's time to uh, it's time to flip it on them a little bit. 
Okay, well, that's good to know that if they've got the faith focus, you can actually choose whether or not they become Catholic. They, they don't just assimilate it sort of autonomous, uh, autonomously. So let's say it would be better for him not to know. Obviously not. It would be better for him to not know. For the glory of the dynasty, for the glory of the people, we're going to abuse old forgotten doctrines to give our, give our legitimacy to a secular pope of a religion. I, I mean... It's a little fucked up, really, isn't it? Anyway, let's get ourselves some prisoners. And can we assault this one down? Support holding six. Again, it's another thing I tried to do was disable siege assaults. I don't know whether I just did it wrong. Normally, like I said, it's the case of just adding a line to the save game, disabling it. Did not work. So we've still got to put up with this. But again, I think because... I, and what I'm inclined to believe, anyway, is that because it's HIP, you know, it's more historically accurate to perhaps siege things down. They've raised 16,000 men right there for me to destroy. You're so generous. Haimo, uh, you are not as good as Gottfried. So let's swap those guys out. Um, oh, they've, they've gone. They've ran off. Okay, fine. We can assault this one down, though, and that'll probably give us 100% war score. Uh, I think this is friendship. Whatever. There we go. 100%. Nice. And again, we're just doing this to stop the Seljuks moving in on our kingdom, right? So we're going to quickly grab that one. There's another one here that we could move in on. Maybe offer vassalization to say no. Um, opinion, foreign culture, not my du jour liege. I mean, we could push it for the lady we just subjugated. Absolutely. Let's do it. They've behind some troops, which are immediately going to get annihilated. So that's great war score for us. Look at that. Huge amount of war score. All we've got to do now, take the capital. And that is yet another province safe from the Seljuks. In fact, that's more or less everything, right? Oh, there is one more. Sebastia. We will go and get Sebastia afterwards. Got more tech advances. All right, what have we got then? Um, economy. So we wanted trade. Was it not trade practices and... Oh, God, I don't remember. I'm going to have to double check. Um, it's town infrastructure and trade practices. Right, so town infrastructure level 6 we'll go for first. Just because that gives us a bit more tax. Whereas trade practice isn't really going to do anything for us. Because we're not. Uh, oh, you know what? We get both. We can get both. I've lied to you all. This is great. So we can actually see the very end game of Flogi's tech mod. I don't think we've ever done this before. So let's go ahead. Oh, I was already overseeing construction. But we'll just make sure he remembers what he's doing. Big pave road. It's only going to take a day. Oh my god, we can't. There's still more? You're kidding me. There's level 7 as well. And that is the final one. Oh my god, that's nuts how much has been added to this mod. Genuinely still one of my favorite CK2 mods. It just makes the building system actually worthwhile. The base game building system is, is awful, isn't it? There we go. We've built ourselves a Citadel, giving another 3 port level. Some technology spread rate, which is actually fairly relevant when we're, when we're making this place to an actual powerhouse. And then 0 0.5 military tech points. That's huge. Normally it's 0, 0.0, you know, X value. Because that is quite a lot of extra tech. Can we build anything else? We've got a tax collector. That's absolutely incredible news. Thank you very much. Oh my god, a lot to build now, huh? This is going to help out our tax a lot because these are all just tax-based trade buildings. So obviously Southern Fruits Merchant. We've got Jewel Merchant here. Tax income plus 10, which actually might be affected by trade practices. I'm not entirely sure. Glass Merchant. And then finally... Oh, there we go. War's over. <laughs> In other news, finally the war's over. No, no. Finally what I was going to get at before I rudely interrupted myself. Um, firstly, put those boats down. I don't even know why they're raised. Um, finally, what we can build is... Oh, man. Is this new stuff as well? I was going to say, I wanted to build the Imperial Palace, which gives us prestige and tech rate. Might actually give us access to a couple more buildings. Yes, it does. Military District, which I believe in turn gives us access to the Bodyguard Building, which in turn gives us access to more retinues. <laughs> this is great. Oh, my God. We're spending so much money. My court physician, Falkes, has shared some of his latest ideas with me. Sure. Advancements in benefit. Medicine benefit is all. We can also go for a crossbow shooting range. I assume these are the buildings that we've got from flipping back to uh, Frankish. We've got some heavy cavalry there as well, which is definitely worthwhile. Man, that's a big boost. Oh, I'll say that. We've only got 119 heavy cavalry here, so it's not that great. All right. Oh, man. We can build a few, though. Okay. There we go. Let's still make sure Constantinople. That's my, that's my big sort of uh, caveat for this this playthrough. Let's make sure that our capital duchy is always super powerful because we don't have access to the uh, we don't have access to the Great Wonders, which by the way we played a little bit of on stream. The new patch that adds free to the game by the way, which I was very impressed by. The Great Wonders, they seem incredible. Like I'm genuinely really, really impressed they didn't charge five dollars to this. And honestly, I would have been happy paying five dollars for it because it seems like it's well fleshed out. It seems like an absolutely incredible little addition there. Giving it away for free, Paradox I know it's madness, especially when you look at, like, Stellaris, or when you look at more, I mean, even worse so, EU4, and their horrendous DLC practices. In fact, they gave, honestly, what could be considered a very small mini expansion to CK2. It was, it was nuts. Like, it's genuinely very, very good. Right, let's get this dude. It's only 1,000 prestige. We've got enough of that to go around, I'd say, at this point. It's going to be, again, a very, very easy war with our massive, massive cavalry units. It's almost entirely heavy cavalry. That's awesome. This is such a cool little army we've got here kicking around, right? We're going to take that 75% war score, and again, it's just going to be exactly the same as that other province. We're capped at that, just got to take the capital now, and we are good. So, Au Contraire has, as of right now, timid, idolizer, and playful. 
I'm not actually sure what, if any, education uses any of those in conjunction. In fact, I think they're all counter. Because I was going to say we could maybe educate them in diplomacy. But Timid is working against that. Um, Playful is good, though, for diplomacy, though, isn't it? I feel like he's going to be a bad character. I feel like we may have nerfed him into the ground a little bit by doing this whole religion thing. But you know what? He's already very good off the bat because he's got Prodigy. So, you know what? I'll, I'll take it a little bit. Right, we don't really serve any tiles. That's looking a lot, lot, a lot, lot nicer, I think. Now that we've tidied up those borders pretty significantly. Speaking of borders, I'm kind of hoping the vassals will also tidy up Leon and whatever that... What is this? Some random Merchant Republic as well there. And obviously, they're going to finish off the rest of Africa too. I imagine they probably got just, you know, du jour claims on the rest of it at this stage. We're slowly pushing into Eastern Europe too. Obviously, we've got Hungary. We've grabbed a lot of... Well, we've actually just got straight up all of Poland at this, right? this stage, right? Du jour? Uh, oh, we're missing, at, like, three provinces. Okay, fair enough. And then, I don't know, maybe they'll keep expanding. Apparently, we share a border with Kiev. This is... Oh, no, wait, that's not us. Who's this dude? Oh, no, wait, that is that is us. Okay, no, that absolutely is us. We share a border with Kiev as well. This is insane. Like, our vassals, this episode, or this this series, I should say, have really just basically pulled out all the stops, huh? They've just, they've just gone pretty nuts with things. All the way from the very south of Central Africa up to what... Is that not... That is the most northern province. Oh, no, actually, I guess there's Norway there, but... Oh, and Iceland. Uh, one of the most northern provinces on the map. It's absolutely nuts. So, what an empire. And the fact that we've had to really do nothing either, and the Holy Roman Empire has just naturally sort of occurred, or the Roman Empire, I should say, has naturally occurred. Obviously, we're going to have to go to war with this, this, this big old... This big old Seljuk blob at some point, but, man, that's kind of nuts that they've just sort of span out this much. I, I don't think you'd normally see that, do you, in base game CK2? At least I'm speaking from, uh, you know, anecdotal experience here. I don't think that... I've ever seen the vassals be quite as aggressive as they have been this time around. Maybe it's because we've got such low obligations on them. Speaking of which, maybe we want to heighten the obligations. We have high crown authority, but we have next to nothing on feudal obligations. We have no burglar obligations at all, apparently. No clergy obligations and no tribal obligations. Um, right, tax the church. Tax the church. Who's going to say no to that? Uh, nobody's voted, but I think they were all loyalists, though, weren't they? Uh, oh, yeah, no, they are. They're good. They're fine. This guy's voting no. This guy will probably also vote no. And then we've got four other votes. And obviously ours too. Proceed with... Oh my god. 18% chance we can kidnap the Caliph. Do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. That's fine. Oh, I thought we were in some serious trouble then. Elnassir the surprised the kidnappers with the ferocity of his struggle. And they were forced to flee when the guards came running. While an investigation is underway, currently there is no one... Currently, no one is aware that you were behind the assault. Curses. Well, that could have been a lot, lot worse. And in fact, that was quite a low chance for that plot to succeed anyway. So I'm very surprised we didn't just straight up get the worst outcome. Can we not just try and kidnap him again? 132%. We'll just keep trying it over and over and over again. Eventually, we're going to grab him, right? And who really cares if he finds out what's he going to do? Declare war on us? I mean, I doubt it. Let's put it that way. I don't, I don't think he would dare it. I mean, how many troops has he got? 36,000 versus our mighty 206k. Not including, or, well, that is including, but also not taking into account the ridiculous retinue we've got too. She's going to start standing around here menacingly. That's absolutely nuts. Oh, God. Now to find out the results of this. Uh, yep. That's terrible. Oh, God. We can't trade him in learning. I guess we're going to have to go intrigue. I mean, he could come out an average. So, basically, average chance of coming out an average diplomat, right? Average chance of... of or, or, or chance of most likely he is going to come out an average steward. Most likely he's going to come out an average diplomat. Chances are he's going to be level 2, level 3 education in intrigue. A possibility of a level 4, but very rare. Do not train him in martial ever. Learning is the same chance of intrigue as getting one of the higher tier educations. So, oh man, this sucks. Level 2, level 3. Those are level 2, but with a little more increase on level 3. But do we really want a level 3 intrigue character? Or would we prefer just a straight up diplomat? Fuck it. You know what? We've not played as an intrigue character this entire playthrough, to my knowledge. So why not go for that? We need a guy who can keep this empire together. Ocontra is getting older and he'll soon be ready for presentation at the Kaiserlich Court. Watching him these days, you can't ever wonder if some sort of intervention wouldn't do wonders in making him more like yourself. 15% chance of him becoming diligent, 15% chance of him becoming brave, 31% chance of him becoming stressed and depressed, and 8% chance that he is angry at us. He got stressed. Great outcome there. Fantastic. They rejected low clergy obligations. They rejected it? Even though the council is mostly loyalists? So, hang on. Worst case scenario. So, he'd have said no, he'd have said no, he'd have said no. He might have said no. Well, that's still... Oh, I suppose that would be 50-50 then, wouldn't it? With our vote and three loyalists. Okay, fair enough. We've got, we've got these fucking counsellors who apparently hate us. Why are they on board then? Advisors, what's wrong with you? 
What do you mean one might? He's got a hundred opinion of us. Mr. Wolf has a hundred opinion of us. Yet is still disloyal. What a dick. What an unbelievable dick. I would. You know, we could actually just sack him out for a loyalist. Normally you would try and not get rid of him because that would upset your your vassals, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't do that because you don't want to upset them. But seeing as they love us anyway, it's not really any loss to that, huh? Right. So I'm gonna give this dude the uh, whatever the hell we just made. Was that this one? Oh no, it was, it was Philippopolis. Give him that one just to try and again keep our oh, vassal limit down. Oh Jesus. Um. I think they just went to war with the Seljuks and grabbed a bunch of land. I'm not entirely sure, though. Right, give that to a duke as well. Here you go, Grand Lantern. What was that? Kahira. There you go. You can have that one. Do we inherit something? So then we're way over. Jaffer Ascalon. I don't really want this shit either. Here you go, Grand Lantern title. You can have Jaffer Ascalon. I'm saying that's going to give... Those are, those are personal domain. We don't need to worry about that. It's our vassal limit that suddenly is screwed. Um, can we make any kingdoms? The kingdom of Aquitaine. Oh. Okay, sure. Make the kingdom of Aquitaine. I, th I don't think it'll make any difference giving these away, to be honest with you. But we'll we'll chuck them away. Yeah, it's not going to really affect any of our vassals. We've got Duchy there, but again, that's not going to affect anything. We're looking to put independent dukes under... I didn't even have... Do we even have any independent dukes? Oh, we've got this mess. What has happened here? Oh, absolutely. Okay, let's just see if we can even make a kingdom level title or something. So quickly make these. Um, there we go. Right, okay. This is This is the mess. So that boy is already our vassal. Can we make a kingdom? No. Uh, what about this one? Trebizond? Absolutely not. Um, we can assert that one. Okay, so we're going to just basically give this duke, essentially the Duchy of Amasi and the Duchy of uh, Caesary. <laughs> That's not how you pronounce that, but I'm not going to try and say it the proper way. Right, there you go. You can have that one, and you can have this one. And that should more than tidy up our vassal limit. There we go. That's a little nicer. What about this dude? Um, it's Count of... Oh, we just remember that his name is Damianos. Right, transfer, vassalage, have him as well. Nicely tidied. Okay, there we go, that's better. 37 out of 43 is a much, much greater improvement than what we were at last time. And, more importantly, we've got some more promises under our domain. Fingers crossed, the next episode, we can go to war and form Rome. I, th I think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna happen. Fingers crossed this kid comes out well. We're probably going to die within that time. You know, Drunkard, which is health minus 0 0.5. Cancer, health minus 3. Magical Corruption gives health plus 2 point. What? Oh. Dark Force is keeping them alive for nefarious reasons. I see. Okay, so Satan's keeping our character alive. Anyway, fingers crossed our dude dies, and then this guy can inherit straight away, and we can really kick things off. Next episode, very much like might be one of the past, the last few left remaining in the series. This is going to be big. Next episode is definitely, definitely going to be big. Let's give a big shout out to the new patrons. I've got a new list together. I've, I've tried to fix it, despite patron being kind of slow on things this month again. But a big thank you to, and bear with me if I screw this up because I'm not used to this order yet. A big thank you to Harik, Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kuroso, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Vaniel Sedini, Conspired C, Croesus, Escape, Facundo Vasquez, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Loris, Necrophilon. Palvis Presley, Sean Thornton, Tom Terry 18, Vacuous Backus, Wolf Scent, and Sassy 7011. See, the names are easy to read. I haven't got a problem with that. The fact is, my brain's telling me, hey, the name that comes next is X, because I've been reading these names in those order for a month, and it clearly, clearly is not. I've just, this is this this next list I'm dreading as well. Thank you for your support, but for the love of God, please help me. Gray, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Llewellyn Thomas, Arakira, Asaro, Betamus Max, Chris, Crazy Pat, Don, Dunk Honey 2 and 7, Gabriel Vanders, Genji Zerka, Haji Dumar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, I See the Great, Jay Lehrer, James Barnes, Euron DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Block, Nathan Flores, Nick, Panther Pearl, <laughs> Peter, Sir Thor the Swede, Wolfie, Zico, Adam Person, Sudini, Fraser Brennan, Noah Gallimore, and the Insane Pickle. My god, I actually got through it. 